We're on to 5b in our set theory chapter of Intro to Analysis by Rosalind. And um, in this problem, we're showing yet another set equality here. Um, and here, so we have this same notation that we've been talking about last time. And I, I kind of wrote out, in Rosalind, they have this definition too here. Oh, I need to put a i actually. This is, this is, let me put this in white here. This is a i. And we, I wrote out these definitions that they have in, in the book, but um, this is going to help us along in our proof as well, so we'll refer back to these. But let's get started here. So we're just going to say, let, well, let me, actually, before, I, before we get started, let's talk about something here. So let's say, let's say X is in the complement of just the union of two sets A and B. And that means that if X is in the complement of a union B, then in order for X to be in the complement of a union B, well, of course, that implies that X is not in a union B. In order for X to not be in a union B, X cannot be in A, and X cannot be in B. Similarly, if X is in the complement of a union B, union C, then that means that X is not in A, X and, and, and X is not in B, and X is not in C. And you can sort of see where I'm going with this. If X is, if, so we can see that if X is in any number, a family of, uh, an indeterminate number of set, the union of an indeterminate number of sets, then X can't be in any of the of the sets in that uh, family of sets. So let's talk about, let's kind of just draw a little picture here to see why that is. Let's say that I have, there's three sets here. And we can kind of see, and that's A, B, the area, and this circle is A, this is B, and this is C. If X lies anywhere anywhere in one of these circles, or even in the intersection of any of these circles, then X is immediately in the union of A, union B, union C. Because if X isn't, remember we talked about in previous videos, if X is in A, then that implies that X, X is in A union X for any set X, set X. And so if X is anywhere in here, anywhere in the in the area of one of these circles or the multiple of these circles if x is here or here then that means that x is in the union of a union b union c so we need a criterion for why x or we need a criterion for how to get how, how to state or not how to state how can an x not be in the union of a number uh, indeterminate number of sets well as you can kind of tell from this picture and as we can kind of tell from what we've worked on over here that x that the criterion is that x can't be in any of the sets so let x be in this union of xi for each i and i our indexing set i then that means x is in the complement of this set then that implies, of course, by the definition of set complement, that X is not in this union of family of the family of sets XI for I and I. And if X is not in this family of sets XI and I, the union of this family of sets, then that means this means that X is not in XI for each, for each i and i. And if x is not in xi for each i and i, another way of saying this by the definition of a set complement, of set complement, is x is in the complement of xi for each i and i. And look at this. Look at this. We, we just derived a definition up here. If x, the intersection of a sub i for each i and i is all x all x such that x is in a i for each i and i 
And we just talk, we just sit down here. X is in the complement of X, big X sub I for each I and I. So that must mean by the definition of the intersection of a family of sets, then X is in the intersection for each I and I of the complement of X sub I straight from the definition of the intersection of a family of sets. And we've just proven, we've just proven that the left-hand side set is a subset of the right-hand side set, right-hand side set, because we, we, every X in this set here, every X in this set, set here has the property of being in this union. Every X in this left-hand side set has this property. And so since we just proved that an X, any X having this property must also be in the right-hand side set, then we've proven that all x in this left-hand side set must be in the right-hand side set. And we'll do, the same, we'll, we'll, we'll do the same thing for the going the other way, showing that the intersection for all i and i of the complement of x, the xi's, the, this family of intersections is a subset of the union. Oops, not the union of, it's the complement of the union, the complement of the union, the complement of the union of x sub i for all i and i. And let's let's do it go by the, go about it the same way. Let me change colors here to show that we're going to do in the second part of the proof. So let x be in this intersection i and i of this this family of intersections of the complement of x i for all i and i. And that means, this implies by the definition that we talked about up here, by the definition we talked about up here, that X is in AI, so whatever is inside this, this intersection here, this family, this intersection notation, or this family of intersections here, whatever this set is, that means that X is in AI for each I and I. X is in every AI for each I and I. So, if X is in every AI, if X is in every AI like we have in this definition, then that means that like, just like here, X is in the complement of XI for each, for each and every, you can even add an and every, I in I. And if X is in the complement of XI, then by the definition of set complement, X is not in XI for each I and I. And look, what we just talked about up here, we just talked about what criterion we need for an X to not be in the union of an indefinite number of sets. Well, that means that X can't be in any of the sets in that union. And if X is not in any XI for I and I, X is not in any of them, then that implies that X can't possibly be in the union for all i and i of x i by what we talked about upstairs here at the beginning of the video, and if x is not in the union of i of x of the x i for each i and i, then that means by definition of set complement that x is in the complement of the union of the family of unions of these family of sets x i, and we're done. We've just shown the right hands the the that the right-hand side set is a subset of the left-hand side set, and we've just finished.